Hello, welcome to this first video. This time we'll speak about available satellite images and data. And uh, so let's have a look about the Russell model. Russell model, the world is represented as a surface divided into a regular grid of cells. So you see all the features in the land are represented as squared as cells that has the name of pixel. And each pixel has a ground size called spatial resolution we see later this detail. And the satellite images store the reflectance value of each single feature on the Earth. Let's say that each single feature has a value of reflectance of the, of the Sun in this case, and these values are stored by remote sensors as a different wavelength. Let's say that the water, for example, has a, a high reflectivity in the blue and a very low in the infrared, while the vegetation, due mainly to chlorophyll, has a higher reflectance in the green and infrared wavelength, while it is a very low value in the blue and red. So let's speak about spatial resolution. You see that these are two different images with different spatial resolution, so it means that they can be used for different purposes. So let's say that with these images you can perform a land cover map at the scale of 100,000, for example, while the, with this very high resolution, this is such a Google Earth, for example, you can perform high detail land cover maps or cadastral, let's say. Let's have a look to satellite images that are available for free. This is, let's say, the Landsat family that you see started from 1972 with different sensors until Landsat 8 that is currently providing images also for free and this family has a very useful uh, it's very useful for multi-temporal analysis at the low detail scale because you see that the, the pixel spatial resolution let's say the dimension of the of the cells is 30 meters or 50 meters for panchromatic so they say that you cannot see objects that a lower value than 15 meters at the same time, we can see that uh, these images are very useful for multi-temporal analysis since, as I told before, data are available since long time ago. This is an overview of the detailed overview of the Landsat family. You see that uh, at the beginning, Landsat 4, we have only five bands, while now in the last uh, uh, Landsat 8, we have 11 bands with different wavelengths that allow us to have several information uh, because, as I told you before, the object has a different reflectance at different wavelength. So for each object, we have his base value for 11 different wavelengths, you see, is the wavelength uh, intervals, and so it allows us to have a lot of information concerning land cover, water, pollution, and so on. The Landsat are available, a sort of X and Y coordinates, internal coordinates, it's called the path and row. Here you can have a map of the different path and row of Landsat. For example, I can define a single image by giving his path and row. In this case, for example, this one could be 170 and 60. And when you look for a different uh, images and you don't know maybe it's path and row, through this uh, website, you can have the latitude and longitude and you convert them to path and row so you will know uh, which is the path and row of the images given a defined coordinates. So let's have a look to other uh, available data for free. That's MODIS for example. And its instrument is operating both in Terra and Aqua spacecraft and they view the surface of the Earth every one or two days while Landsat usually has uh, passed over the same points twice a month. And so you see that it has 36 spectral bands. So it gives us a very uh, useful information with 36 different bands. But the resolution, you see that is 250, 50 meters, and 1000 meters. So they can be used as very low detail scale. Another sensor is the AVHRR. That is a, a sensor that is used mainly for, you see, cloud and surface mapping, land water boundaries, snow ice detection, and other environmental uh, topics. And you see that the resolution is one kilometer, and 
it means that it can be used, let's say, for national level or say um, not a detailed information, but uh, as well, it is uh, uh, for free and so it can be used for different purposes. So then let's have a look where we can find this data. You see, this is Earth Explorer. It's a website from where you can download a very large set of data. And uh, first of all, you can enter a search criteria. So you can enter or an address, let's say, in the city, or as well, if you register, it's for it's for free. You can enter your shapefile or KML, and automatically it will show you all the information you need for the selected areas. As I told you before, you can enter or the name of a place, in this case Florence in Italy, or as well you can enter. You remember that Landsat is defined as path and row. You can enter your path and row, and then automatically the website will show you the available Landsat images, in this case, at a given path and row. Or as well, if you zoom, you can set use map, and in this case you will see all the uh, available satellite images in the frame of the, your zoom in the, in the website. Then you can also select the data range and other parameters, and for sure, in the data sets, you will select which kind of images you need. Another website from where you can download data is the Global Land Cover Facilities through the ESDI interface. You see, this is all the information you can download. So you see, there is a very wide set of data. You see, ESDI as this interface, you can search your data through three different, uh, say, procedure: map search, path and row, or product search. You see, this is through the map search, you set which set of data you want. You zoom and you select. Inside the website, there is a very detailed guide to uh, to show you how to search the images. Then you can start data and date. And then you see, you can browse also by product search. You have the list of the available set. There are much more. This is just a screenshot. Once you select on the desired uh, data, you see all the available uh, images that you can download. You select, then preview and download, and you download on your computer. If you are, let's say, skid expert, you can also define the sensor, start date and date, or new scenes, which is the, uh, say, the sensor, the, the information, the data you want to download, then the start path and start row, and path and row, and then here you will have the overview of the area you select, and you can download your information. Another website is Globis. You see, you can click on it. This is the interface. You can select by zooming the images you want to download. You can set up also the period, and also, let's say, the maximum cloud allowed, because for sure, if you have a high density of cloud, you will not be able to see the information of the data. And this is other, let's say, information I've set, I, I put here also in the, if not the strictly satellite images, but there are raster data available for free and there are raster data derived from satellite images. You have the Landsat forest cover change. So there is a raster with a different color according to different uh, forest cover change. You see that uh, this is the class available and you can use this for several purposes of, uh, let's say, environmental investigation. You have a three cover continuous fields and you see this is just two images of the same part, a different data. And you see by analyzing them, you can see the change between five in five years. So it uh, can be used for change detection. You have as well the gross primary production over, over eight days. So you see that are all information that are available for free as I told you before, at one kilometer of grid, so it's not used for very detailed information, but if you work at the national level or province level, they can be used for detecting changes over time. This is as well the leaf area index as a mosaic over a day, so you, you see that it's very frequent acquisition of data. 
and also the land surface temperature that are uh, for sure as I told you before they're not detailed information but they are for free and they are uh, all over the year and in the past so you can perform very important uh, changes uh, detection in, during the, the years as well there's a AVHRR land cover different classes with different resolution as you see this is an example so you can have um, for free maps that can, you can use for several purposes other information you can download for free on the web concerning, let's say, data derived from uh, satellite images. There are the global map data, so you have the national data, the global and cover and global vegetation, and they, can, they are downloadable completely for free. As well, for people working in Africa, you can download the images as a low resolution, but already clipped. So they are very useful if you want to insert into report or just analyzing uh, already clipped information clipped on uh, administrative boundaries so national or provincial level so let's say now we can search and download the images in the next video we'll try to use them thank you